My talk, of course, have been on one hell of a journey for probably the last 20 years or so. And if you look at the steps involved uh, along the way and all of the technology disconnects, they all appear to lead to this one place. Um, so, of course, about 10, 12, 13 years ago, we were all talking about the introduction of uh, IP telephony. At the time, it felt like a big deal uh, because we were, we were moving from a circuit switched environment to a uh, to a to an IP environment, and that was a massive change for MITRE in that we no longer did the switching; we were reliant on data networks to do those switchings. Switching, we no longer owned the whole infrastructure, well, except the 1308 cable. So that was a big change and a big step on the way to, uh, to the point that we're getting to now. Um, We've been doing some other things uh, along the way. So we, uh, when we first built our IP telephony back, back, uh, uh, product, our proprietary one, it runs in the VxWorks environment. Uh, about four or five years ago, we did a big piece of work around porting our core control into uh, uh, onto an industry standard service. Uh, and what we did is we created something called Mitel Standard Linux. So that is effectively Linux with all the stuff that we don't need to throw out. Uh, and that, that, that created us a common platform on which to, to, to move uh, all of our software pieces, most notably uh, Mitel Communications Director, MCD. Having done that, um, you can then move on to <coughs> think about ways of making that software more portable. And of course, a very special way of making that, uh, that software more portable is to move into a, uh, into a virtual world. So I'll talk about that. Um, just to finish the journey off, uh, I think there's a lot we can, we can do looking forwards around uh, virtual desktops, working with VMware, VMware View, uh, working with web services, uh, and I think a lot of the drivers behind that will, will come from uh, a trend that we're starting to see in certain industries now where, where uh, users are bringing on their own devices. Now I appreciate that in pub some public sector uh, areas and also in some critical private sector areas like uh, financial services that create some problems. Uh, I think there's two views on it. One is that it gets you out of all of the end users wanting technology refreshes all the time, and the, the increasing plethora of different devices out there. On the other hand, it makes it, it can potentially make it much harder to, to manage devices, manage security, manage what's happening with those end users. So that's the journey. Um, in the context of this piece of uh, Gartner research, so Gartner do a piece of research uh, to IT directors to identify um, key areas of technology uh, and their importance to organisations. And I guess the good news for my tell is that of the top five, we are addressing and thinking about four of those. Uh, but it's interesting that the very first one, of course, is virtualization. And I do believe that that re relates back to something that Jonathan said earlier on. Um, it relates to the current economic climate and the drive to do more with less. Okay, so November 2010, we launched our freedom architecture. And I should say right away, there were no new products directly associated with that uh, freedom launch. What it does is it provides us with a framework to articulate our strategy and also uh, the value we can add to customers. So let me just go through them one by one. First of all, a cloud-ready software stream, single cloud-ready software stream. So what we're saying there is you can use Mitel Communications Director on a Mitel proprietary platform, and most of our users do today. You can use it on an industry standard server, or you can move into a virtualized environment. And by using a single software stream, what that means is your investment in that software, your investment in the licensing, your investment in the end user devices um, remains safe um, across all of those, of those environments. The other important thing to note about that approach is it means that whichever 
architectural decision you make, you're not changing desktop behaviour or the way that you support business processes. So those transitions become much easier and much less disruptive to your business. Uh, second one, uh, very easy to understand, I think, taking that in-office communications experience and being able to re reproduce it uh, if you choose to work at home, or most importantly, if you choose to work from some kind of mobile device. The third bullet point, uh, and in a way it supports the first two, is to be as open as possible. Uh, as you know, Mitel is a focus supplier of unified communications. We don't do anything else. Uh, and so it's very important that we can work with anybody's data network, we can work with, with practically anybody's uh, industry standard server, and also the same strategy in the total logic industry as well with the end user devices and application pieces. Uh, so we, as we go through the slides, you'll see that trend coming through. And then the final one, um, because at the moment it's a bit of a minefield, is freedom from commercial offerings. Uh, so I know there's a lot of talk about whether it's best to buy, whether it's best to release, taking managed services, and of course a lot of talk about software as a service at the moment. So the environment we're trying, we're trying to create is one in which you can migrate between those environments as your business develops. And again, it doesn't change the desktop behavior, uh, and it doesn't result in you having to make a major investment. Putting that into pictures, um, one IP network, uh, the connectivity to the public, uh, uh, for public access, uh, increasingly will be uh, SIP trunks. Uh, there was a couple of reasons for that, um, most of which Jonathan uh, pointed out. I think if you're considering any kind of centralization, the very important thing is, you, is that you can map geographic numbers to non-geographic lo locations. Uh, that's, that's a really key thing uh, if you're considering Second piece is the devices, of course. Um, I've got a view on this. They're all IP devices. Um, they're all essentially computers of one kind or another. Uh, so it really comes down to uh, whether they've got big screens or little screens, lots of processing power, lots of keys, and you give them all of the it, It's form factor. It's all about form factor. Um, and it's a great opportunity for us because the panacea is to get to a point where all your communication suite can operate across all of these devices equally and importantly give the end user completely, uh, completely consistent uh, look and feel. The big arrow here uh, would be mad to ignore the trend year on year that involves people moving from fixed devices across to mobile devices. And the way that you can build an enterprise solution out of all of those devices. But it's not just the devices that need to be mobile these days. Uh, there's also a need to make the application piece mobile for reasons of uh, business continuity, for instance. So we'll be talking a little bit about the benefits of making those, uh, those application pieces mobile as well. Okay, um, most, of our event, most of our competitors also have virtualization in their portfolio. Um, and when we get to the end, we'll ask a few questions about the actual value of it um, and some of the, the, the characteristics of it to understand whether it has business value for you and whether other vendors can meet all of those requirements. Because in my mind, the end game is to create um, one environment for all of your business applications, including your voice. Um, and that gives you some, some other knock-on benefits. For instance, you only need one business continuity plan because it operates across the whole environment. So it's really important that you have the capability to fit your voice into that environment won't work for every customer, it's necessary for every customer, it's necessary if you do it. So, turning it on the end user for a moment, uh, Michelle here, she's uh, a Britannic salesperson. Um, I picked a salesperson simply because they are 
perhaps one of the more challenging uh, people in terms of beating the crime because they're fully mobile. Uh, so Michelle, by way of example, she starts her working day with a salesman meeting in the botanic office. Uh, she happens to be a black woman. Uh, because she scheduled that meeting in her diary, uh, her diary is one of the things that can control her dynamic status. So it automatically sets her dynamic status to the meeting. And because it's done that, she has set a configured set of rules under that that means her call gets voice number. She gets lucky uh, in that the sales meeting finishes early. She comes out of the uh, out of the office, gets into her car, and because her car is for the Bluetooth kit, and because her black will record that recognises the association with that Bluetooth kit, it the game automatically changes her dynamic status. So that event has a rule under it that says, I'm going to change the status to, to, to mobile. And by doing that, um, her calls are now being directed to a mobile device. What she can also do is pick up the voicemail messages that were left while she was in that meeting. She can see them because it's visual voicemail uh, through, uh, through a product called My Talk Communication uh, Communicator Advanced. Uh, she can see she's got four voicemails. One of them is urgent, it's from a client. She picks that uh, voicemail up and the client needs <coughs> to change to a contract. So on her way home, she uh, calls into the office. Of course not, she's right. And uh, she speaks to, to somebody in the legal department. Because she's using a um, uh, product uh, recently released by, uh, by Rick called uh, MBS, um, she can benefit from uh, four-digit dialing into the office. Uh, in fact, her BlackBerry can now operate just like uh, an extension of the, uh, of the office telephone system. When she's out of the office, uh, that means uh, that the calls are effectively originated by the MBS application in her office. Uh, when she's in the office, she can use her BlackBerry telephone set as a SIP extension. So, on arriving back at home, with one uh, button press and move call, she can move her call to a teleworker set on the desk. Uh, and then she can build that uh, call out into a full collaboration session to share that document uh, with the contracts manager in the office, make the changes, uh, agree those changes and send them to the customer. What's also happened is as she, as she arrived home, because she's marked the GPS home, again, uh, her, her black will recognise that she's within a defined uh, distance of a, of a marked location at home, and it will change her dynamic status to at home, which means that a call to be directed to the table uh, I'm a black user, I use that for the functionality, I've got my home mark, I've got Caldecott, it's marked, um, and I find it's fantastic for one reason. Bit of the technology under the under the bonnet, uh, very quickly. Um, a couple of years ago, we changed the way the call control works. So instead of directing a call uh, to a device, we, we direct it to a personal ring group. In that personal ring group, we can put up to eight devices. Each of those devices can be set to absent or present. When a call comes, call comes in, what a number it will, it will ring all the devices that are present. And that, you know, is a very simple way of controlling those. Step two, of course, this is to use a product like Unified Communicator Advanced, um, or of course we can do an integration with, uh, with Microsoft. Um, traditional way of doing it is uh, on the desktop um, for a knowledge worker. Uh, my personal view is that if, if, if that's all you do for a group of 20 people, then you haven't really infused it into your, into your business process. Uh, a much more exciting thing to do is to deploy it everywhere. Uh, pick out a couple of examples in the contact centre. Uh, what you can do is build uh, skill groups. So maybe your agents are, are, are geared up to 
to uh, answer perhaps 80 or 90 percent of the calls. Uh, for, the, for the remaining ones, you probably need access to uh, some skills in the back office. So what you do is you use the presence and availability piece to identify, firstly to identify skill groups, secondly to identify the presence of that skill group so you can choose somebody to communicate with. And of course it could be as simple as an instant message into the back office while you're talking to the customer to resolve that issue. And then of course there's the issue of true mobile workers like Michelle, because those are the ones that are out of the office and they're hardest to keep uh, to, to keep plugged into your organisation in that communication. So we mentioned bring your own a little bit earlier on. Uh, there's some really exciting things you can do delivering presence and availability uh, and unified communication, <coughs> not as an application, but as a web service. Uh, and if you do that, uh, you can pretty much deploy it on any smartphone, because all you need is a, is a, is a browser of some kind. Uh, and I think going forwards, you also see that model used more and more as a way of building collaboration tools and portals with uh, customer communities, clients, maybe patients, maybe uh, maybe students, depending on depending on the scenario. Um, so there's that web service ability which uh, can run across all of all of the mobile devices, and then there's that quest to build specific applications for. Uh, some of the devices, uh, so we covered off that one, we covered off Android, and the next one, which is uh, forecast at the beginning of July, will be the, uh, the, the, the Apple devices. Uh, and really, what that gives you is <coughs> that little applet downloaded from free off BlackBerry App, App World or wherever that gives you the ability to recognise Bluetooth connectivity and uh, really, you know, a GPS location and. Uh, and do that uh, dynamic status piece. So, who's got a computer? <laughs> Several. <laughs> right. So, I've got an admission now in that I think my tail might have been responsible for some of this because five or six years ago, every time we thought of a new application, we thought of a new certain spec for you. It wasn't necessarily the latest sort of spec. Um, and I think the challenge for a vendor is it's very expensive to test your applications against every uh, software revision and more importantly every hardware revision. Uh, so I know in the past I've had some pain and misery with customers who quite rightly get frustrated when you specify a server that is perhaps a year or two old and they've got one of a much higher spec that they want to work your application on. Will it work? Yes. Can I tell them it's supported? No. So we set a, a bag, uh for our own and for our customers uh, resolving that issue. Of course, the first thing we did was create, create what we call the uh, Mitel Application Suite. So that's one platform on which you can run um, unified messaging. Uh, the unified communications uh, app piece, audio web conferencing, some of the contact center stuff, uh, to try and take some complexity out of the solution from a hardware point of view, but also to simplify the uh, provisioning and the installation of it. Um, panacea, as you all know, <laughs> is to virtualize. Um, five years ago, that was a challenge. And I think what's changed it is uh, a few pieces of technology that have, that have uh, unfortunately come out way. The first one was the was the launch of the main chipset. It processes in a different way, which makes it possible to uh, to uh, consider real time voice within, within uh, on an industry standard server, but also so in a virtualized environment. And the second piece was the work that VMware were doing to create vSphere 4, which effectively capitalised on that chip on that chipset. Uh, and we were lucky enough to be able to work with them uh, and help them to an extent with some of the uh, demands that, that, that we had to uh, provide for the rules on these communications to make sure it was tuned for, for, for our specific requirements. So 
with that in mind, about uh, 18 months ago, we launched our first uh, version of uh, Mighty Community Communications Director, the MCD, through the unknown mind. We chose VMware, uh, if I'm honest, probably mostly for this reason, because they were on the case with, uh, with creating a platform that facilitated real-time support. So they, they, they were really the first to do that. Um, but also because they've got about 70-80% uh, of the virtualization market. So of course, from our point of view, that, that, that was the biggest bank for our lot really good place to, to start. Um, <clears throat> there are, I think, two quite separate propositions for the way in which you can use uh, voice in the virtualized environment. Um, the first one is kind of based on a, on a single site methodology. So uh, I'll, take a, I'll take a market that I'm quite familiar with, uh, hospitality. Else. They hate complexity. They do anything to get the to get technology off-site. Um, so you can start to do things like build uh, a hotel in a box. So it's the front of house system. It's called counting, uh, a few business applications, and the voice. Put it on one box. Uh, simplifies the solution. Simplifies the deployment of it. Uh, reduces the size the size of the computer. Room which can often have benefits to, uh, to, to, to <coughs> the hotel. Uh, you could look at it from more from a from a horizontal perspective. So you might create a, a mobility server in a box. So you might say, "Oh, I'll take uh, my telecommunications director. I'll take BlackBerry Bears, and I'll take BlackBerry Mobile Voice Server, and I'll put all of that together. And potentially, I might then network that single box solution back to a, a legacy telephone." just to get me uh, that much needed uh, mobility capability for my, uh, uh, for, my, for my mobile workers. Or there's the more traditional view of it where you're building, where you're building a data center. It might still, open, not, might still only be single site or two sites. And you're starting to consolidate all of the applications together, uh, possibly across a, a VM and um, Over the last 12 months, we've been working hard to make sure all of our applications are delivered as virtual appliances. Because by delivering them as virtual appliances, we're able to simplify the installation process. But also, we're able to get much tighter integration with all of those, uh, all of those features uh, that sit within VMware that you should be able to leverage within your, within your voice environment. Uh, here's our current compatibility list, I don't expect you to, uh, <laughs> you probably can't see it anyway, but I'll pick out some of the important bits. This high <coughs> availability bit, we, we, we'll uh, explore it a little bit, but that gives you, that's an important component within uh, business continuity, as is this slide recovery manager piece. The bit that we can't do is the full tolerance piece. Uh, now the reason for that is because uh, my telecommunications director runs in more than one virtual CD. And currently, uh, if you do that, this full tolerance piece doesn't work. But I'm sure VMware will, uh, will address that at some point. So, just quickly whizzing through some of the benefits, and for those of you who are familiar with VMware already, uh, it does some, it can do some really clever stuff, predominantly through a feature or a platform or feature called uh, vMotion. So, if you have a suite of servers creating a virtual infrastructure and you're running a bundle of applications across those. What it can do is it can manage uh, the resources. So if, for instance, uh, the server loading on these three applications becomes very you know, critical to the server, then it can, it can automatically move those applications out to distribute the, the resource. Similarly, um, Distributed power management allows you, you might be running three or four servers. Um, on a Thursday and Friday, when it's really busy, you might need those three or four servers. Maybe you're a retail organisation uh, that's very busy during December and, uh, and January. 
Uh, and then when it's quieter, perhaps on a Sunday, uh, it can shut these two servers down and just run everything in one server. So that's really good if you're, uh, if you're concerned about sustainability. Um, high availability. Mm. So high availability is really the ability to be able to create uh, another instance of the application uh, on an alternative server. Now that might happen because you want to manage it that way because part of, um, as part of a maintenance process. Or it might happen because you have a failure on a particular server. Um, it doesn't guarantee you uptime, but what it will do is kind of self-heal. So it will create another, an, another instance of that application in the app and bring you back into the service. Um, so the way you would achieve that, that all important continuous availability within a MITEL environment is that you would run two instances of uh, MITEL communications director in a resilient configuration. If one of them happens to fail, or the primary happens to fail, you switch to the second, the phones will be looked to the secondary control to provide that call control. Meanwhile, your primary control would, be, would effectively be uh, rebuilding itself uh, and coming back on screen. On a bigger scale, there's also something called Site Recovery Manager. So if you have two data centers, uh, what Site Recovery Manager does is it enacts um, the kind of uh, scheduled and, and, and agreed process for recreating the, the data center in another location. And again, it's a long way from, uh, from uh, instantaneous, but it uh, is a hell of a lot quicker than uh, trying to do it manually. Okay. So finally, just to finish uh, finish off, I thought I'd go through some of the um, go through some of the business challenges. So turn it on its head a bit. Go through the business challenges. Look at some of the objectives and see how Mitel plus VMware can address those challenges. Um, reducing cost. So of course, through server consolidation, you're going to reduce the amount of rack space cable and data ports that has a knock-on effect on the heating and ventilation, power usage, um, and frees up space. Um, VMware statistics, uh, and these are not taking into account virtualization of this, they reckon that you can reduce your uh, capital expenditure in all of this stuff by around about 60% by virtualizing talking to some customers that have gone through this process, that would appear to be about the right proportion. But, uh, I, think actually, I think actually we have some that have probably beaten that. The next piece is to reduce the operating expenditure. So there's all sorts of benefits here about standardising your infrastructure. Uh, and again, these benefits within the voice world really depend on where you started. So if, for instance, to take an extreme example, um, you were a retail organization, uh, perhaps spread across two or three countries, uh, you've got a very mixed state. Each of those uh, retail premises have got uh, various different key systems and PPXs. Um, savings can be massive of uh, centralizing the kind of estate. Concentrate on the on the VMware piece for, for, for a while. Of course, you've got that server consolidation, which might well mean a reduction in maintenance. Well, will mean a reduction in uh, maintenance costs, also support costs to the to the vendors. Um, it means you can have a common skill across the voice and data environment. I know that's an objective for, for lots of uh, organisations. Uh, if you're investigating the problem, one very clever thing you can do with uh, with VMware is you kind of uh, grab a, a snapshot of the application at a moment, take it offline, take it into the lab and examine all of the logs and the behaviour of that uh, application at that time uh, offline. And, then <coughs> the, the uh, and of course this business of having a single business continuity plan. Uh, in the MITEL domain, uh, Jonathan talked about uh, SIP trunks and the cost savings you can there. Uh, 
some very simple stuff, I'm sure most of you've done this, but being able to make free calls between sites over the UPA. Um, the benefit you get out of deploying IP telephones and being able to move them around and simplifying out of such changes. Um, in the MyTel environment, we have to simply the status service. So if you do have more than one instance of MyTel communications director, then you can elect for all of the forms and fields within the, within the database automatically uh, kind of behave as one, so it's a peer-to-peer -peer protocol and they just sync themselves. Um, and of course all the benefits of web-based administration. Um, and again, a, a VMware piece here. Um, they record you know, before voice virtualization. You can gain a productivity, gain productivity of two to three times. So instead of an IT technician looking after perhaps 30 to 75 users, they might be looking after 200 users. I'm not sure about that one. I think, first of all, is that you could be a little bit conservative, and I think the second one is a bit ambitious. What do you think? Any thoughts on that? Any feelings? Got feelings? Do, do any of you know what your averages are out of interest? And, and are happy to explain them. Do you know how many, how many IT technicians would you have per end uh, per user? Mm -hmm. So, um, being a Canadian company, we've always uh, perhaps paid a little bit more attention to sustainability and green IT than uh, some of our competitors. This was a piece of uh, research done a couple of years ago now, uh, based on uh, various voice vendors at the time, which you can see might well use a good bit less, uh, less power, which, as Jonathan pointed out, does actually equate to quite a useful cost safety. All of our IP phones go into power safe mode. Uh, quite useful. Uh, but then if you overlay the VMware piece, where you're doing this server consolidation, and especially if you're using that uh, power management function, then you can build a really interesting, uh, make a really interesting uh, saving in power and energy consumption. Uh, business continuity. So, I think without the VMware piece, um, as we said earlier, if you go back 10 or 15 years, everybody talked about business continuity, uh, sorry, uh, disaster recovery. And what that meant was, when everything had gone wrong, what are you going to do? Uh, and some of those solutions were horrendously expensive in that in, it involved duplicating resources. Uh, and very often, when you needed to use those resources, which would be very frequently, they actually wouldn't work. Uh, so, if you, want, if you wanted to guarantee those resources worked, then you needed a fairly robust process to test them at some period, whatever you consider to be uh, an appropriately frequent uh, period to make sure that that disaster recovery plan would work. These days, of course, most people focus on softer ways of, uh, of achieving that. Uh, that same outcome. So we use resilience uh, uh, of the IP stacking platform, which means that if one controller goes down, another one takes over. Um, they use what I would broadly call flexible working or mobile working as a way of enabling people to work um, when they suffer some kind of denial of access to the building, or maybe to a metropolitan, metropolitan area have to be careful with some of those technologies, of course, because if it is a metropolitan disaster, it's very likely that your mobile network will be challenged. <laughs> Even the internet could be very challenged in terms of uh, connectivity to home. So there are, there are, I think, you know, a, a mixed approach to it is probably the right approach. Um, and then, of course, you can bring in this VMware piece, use the high availability capability in their site recovery manager and hopefully in the not too distant future that uh, full tolerance piece where you can run 
two applications absolutely in lock sync, so that if one of them suddenly ceases to exist, the other one will take over more or less seamlessly. Um, Agile business environment. So uh, what a lot of this adds up to, uh, depending on how you manage it as a business process and how you manage the resources that, uh, that are required both to implement it and, and to support it, is that instead of spending probably 70 or 80% of your time just keeping the lights on, managing legacy systems, managing multiple servers, you can actually free up some resources for innovation. So instead of spending perhaps um, 70 or 80 percent of your time just keeping the lights on, you can change it to a, to a, a more healthy balance where you're spending 60 percent of your time keeping the lights on, freeing up more resources to explore, explore all the business processes, see how our team can contribute to those, uh, to those business processes and actually gaining some real business efficiency. talked a bit about investment protection. Um, as we said earlier, completely data network agnostic. For the most part, um, platform agnostic, so use any industry standard server. Uh, we're doing our very best to be device agnostic, so whichever device your end user prefers, we have a, a way of integrating to that, providing voice services, and if it's a mobile device, uh, device actually building it into the enterprise uh, communication solution so that you can control it and so that the end user gets a, um, a consistent uh, end user experience. Um, a traditional MITEL deployment today uh, and one which many uh, place, certainly the place where most of where most users will start is probably Mitel Communications Director running a proprietary piece of Mitel hardware with a Mitel application suite to run unified messaging, a bit of contact center, perhaps um, unified communication or audio conference. Uh, but the great thing about this is you can move from here to here, perhaps centralizing, and then across to here in a virtualized environment without trashing your existing investment in, uh, in uh, software and licenses and devices and without disrupting that end of that end user community. The um, lead customer in the UK, which was actually Council, um, a perfect customer from our point of view, uh, Rob had already virtualised just about everything he could in his uh, business applications a week. Um, so if you went into his uh, data center, what he had was a load of servers, all creating the virtualized environment, and his uh, Mitel 3300, that was, that was kind, of, kind of how it was. Uh, so he was an obvious candidate as a new customer for us. Uh, he did that migration in, uh, in February last year, and uh, worked very well for him. I mentioned making sure you don't get misled about virtualization. I've seen lots of people present virtualization confusing with uh, public clouds or private clouds. I think the two things are completely separate personally, although the one, the one can help you with, with the other. Um, some key questions. Because some virtualization platforms and solutions don't actually deliver any or many of the benefits um, so from an architectural perspective, is the software completely decoupled from the hardware? That's quite important to, to, to achieve that isolation. Uh, from a hardware perspective, can you use virtually any industry standard server or is the vendor telling you uh, you have to use you know, maybe their branded hardware? or a very small subset of industry standard servers. What virtualization platform are they using? Is it VMware, is it Citrix, Zensor, or is it Hyper-V? Um, that's very important to kids. Uh, this piece, the installation process, is it a physical to virtual file, or is it a full virtual appliance? Because it will change 
the way it integrates into that virtual platform and therefore change dramatically some of the business, business benefits you can get from it. Um, can you actually virtualize the call control, the voice piece, or are they really just talking about the peripheral of CA and things like that? Uh, can you run any, any business application alongside the voice pieces? in that same environment, leverage all of those resources, and how scalable is it? Because in some scenarios, uh, once you put uh, an application into a virtualized environment, it changes <laughs> the, uh, all of the, the system uh, configuration and can dramatically uh, reduce the number of users. One final slide. Um, we've currently got a 45 day trial, free trial ready. So if you go and register on, uh, well, you can register on the MyTel website, actually you ultimately can put the registering on the VMware website. Uh, you can register for a free 45 day trial. What you get is um, the right to use VMCD for 45 days, put it into your VMware and it for your environment. Uh, you get about six user licenses, I think, uh, and soft phones. Uh, so you can use soft phones. Uh, if you're lucky to have microphones, of course you can use those on it. Or if you had, say, Cisco phones, because they're dual mode, you could use Cisco phones in uh, SID mode. Uh, so it gives you an opportunity to have a little play with the, uh, with the application, get some confidence in it, see how it works with the 